I can vividly recall how I used to dream of my life at university when I was younger. I couldn't wait for the day that my own signature would be an unquestionable and definite yes. I'd imagine how I would party till sunrise with my 20 other best friends I'd just met the night before and how we would smoke cigarettes at the back of lecture halls. Share our deepest and darkest secrets with the random people we met at bus stops. Engrave each other's names onto our thighs with stick and poke and only eat pesto pasta until we turn green. Dance to techno in undisclosed locations, leaving in sweat-stained clothes, cheeks glowing from dancing fever and heels stained with blood. I wanted to fall in love and drink martinis in red velvet carpeted fancy members only clubs while slowly nibbling on liquor drenched olives with my two front teeth, like some hot, high heeled undercover rat. Vacuum sealed in whatever dress I declared tight enough for that evening's outing. We'd leave the bill to empty bar stools that were still radiating heat from hours long gossip. I'm glad I had a wild imagination as a pre pubescent, but now that hormones, exams, and heartbreaks have kicked in, my life looks different. Yesterday I went to a party. It was very nice. It was very sweet. Uh, there was lots of ABBA music, so yeah, it's a little bit. It was nice. But now I have to like do a lot of things. I'm tired. Oh. Bye. Now I get excited about keyboards and coffees with low fat milk alternatives. I'm suddenly very interested in how I can mirror my laptop screen onto an external monitor and then connect a secondary keyboard to it so that when I'm typing away, it makes me feel like I'm in a secretary of a dentist who I'm secretly having an affair with. On Saturday I spend most of my day in a woolen jumper at the library, because apparently I'm also into knitwear now. Sweating and dehydrated, I attempt to make flashcards in a lecture I had the week prior about the cerebral cortex. I laugh at the fact that my brain can't even understand itself. My brain laughs back. In the evenings, I'm tired as fuck, so instead of taking shots of alcohol that taste like gasoline, I take shots of liquid iron instead. I meet my friends at the pub whilst we suck on sticks of tar because a nicotine addiction seems to be the only thing that has stuck after three years of highlighting my lecture slides. Wow. Say something because they love you. Uh. If, some if you're in a pub and you feel like you want a cup of tea, just have it. The next morning I wake up with iron poisoning and somehow a hangover I've acquired after having consumed huh. nothing but hand-cut potato crisps and caramel iron. tea. Guys, I was taking this, this iron supplements to take care of myself better. And then I took just a cap, you know, because I was like, why would you put on a cap if it's not the right fucking percentage to take? the cup. And I've been taking the cap, and the cap is apparently four times the recommended dose. Oh, oh. What is it? It's two and a half times, but you've been taking two caps. Yeah, Sorry. so four times I've been taking the recommended dose. And it's also the plus one. So yesterday I woke up with terrible dizziness and bad vision. I just got like the side effects of too much iron instead of like too little iron. And now I just feel like really bad. Maybe I have to get my stomach bumped. Do you think that's something that they do? No. Or would that cap take charcoal? Just stop eating the iron. <laughs> <laughs> we have a late breakfast at an unspoiled Portuguese cafe. We consume milky teas and talk about Jason Derulo's receding hairline and discuss what bookstore we can have a nap in later. I pray this cafe doesn't fall into the hands of the next TikTok trend. We decide to visit a 4x4 farm with a family of micro pigs that all have been named after porn stars. This is what you sound it's like the closest saying. thing to peace I've had in weeks. I spend eight pounds on a vegan sausage roll, which gives me terrible stomach ache. I wonder if being gluten intolerant will give me extra time on exams.
I try studying by candlelight in the evening, hoping that dark academia will wash away my sins and replace them with the ability to do simple molar conversions in my head without the need of a calculator and chat GTP. All I end up with is wrinkles from squinting my eyes so much because I can't see shit. There's no one to blame but my 12 year old self who had just read Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time and needed to be a scientist so badly. Unfortunately, I'm not the reincarnation of a mastermind professor. I'm a 21 year old girl who requires naps in the library like a toddler and gets told off for it like a toddler. I visit the pharmacy and search for charcoal to counteract my DIY iron poisoning. The person at the till tells me to look at the art supply stores and wishes me good luck with my fine art degree. I stumble in and out of secondhand clothing stores and drink overpriced coffees and get frustrated about shit Wi Fi. I listen to classical music on my headphones and have to stop myself from crying and about what I don't really know. We visit the alcoholics establishment again, and even though I spent 70% of the night thinking about whether I'd forgot to charge my electrical toothbrush or not, I'm happy. I look around at my friends and feel a strong sense of admiration for each one of them. I mean, we'd spent three years of our lives with each other, and even though I feel more like a child now than I did when I first stepped foot onto London soil, I'm so glad I've been able to share my happiness and sadnesses with them. I restrain myself from thinking about the future too much, because as we know now, my predictions are prone to error. Right now I'm here and I'm happy. Tomorrow, next week, next year, who knows where we all are. I buy the next round. <laughs> 